welcome back to snorkel.tv and today we're going to be talking about using tween max to create random perpetual animation in the little example you're seeing running right here um, we have a movie clip that is randomly changing its position its scale and its tint and in the meantime a background movie clip is also tinting uh, so as we watch this everything we see is completely random and unpredictable. So well, I'm going to jump right into this. And before we get into the tween max stuff, we're going to be talking a little bit about generating random numbers. So let me go to my start file. And as a little disclaimer here, um, for using this, uh, for understanding this video, you really have to have an idea of what a custom function is and how to set it up. I will be providing a tutorial on this hopefully someday. Um, but if you check out the Doug Winnie Action Script 101 training series on Adobe TV, um, you'll be in good shape. I'll link that up in the blog post. Um, but anyway, here we have a function called random range. And what it does is it will return a number between a minimum and maximum value. So if I want a number between 1 and 5, I would simply call this function, or I would trace out, sorry what that function returns when I trace random range 1 comma 5. Now as soon as I test this movie out, um, let's just comment something out real quick, you'll see that I forgot to put in the follow, the, lead, the ending print on the trace. So here I get 2.3 blah blah blah. Test again for 1, 2, Two, two, wow, two is common, four, one. Anyway, those are all random numbers between one and five. So that's how that function works. I don't need to know how the function works. I just need to know that when I pass in two values, I'll get a random number in between them. Okay, on down the line, we have a function here called get new color. We used this extensively in a previous tutorial on animating color or tweening random color slash tint. And we also have a function here, just as a dummy function called test, that simply does a test of the tween is done. We'll be using that in just a moment. I have another function set up that we're going to use to do all of our tweening in, and it's called run tween. And run tween right now simply creates a tween max instance and tells my disk movie clip on the stage to take one second to move to an X of 400. So let's just test this out now. And you'll see that every time I test this, that that disk shape or symbol moves to an x value of 400. Now, I don't want it always to go to 400. I want it to be random. So instead of hard coding in the value 400, I'm going to say, hey, let's see what the random range function generates or returns when I pass in the value between 1 and 600. So now, when run tween executes, didn't go that far, went almost across the stage, and you'll see that it's always going to a random x value. To uh, fancy this up a little bit, we could also go to a random y value. Uh, let's tell the y property to go to random range between 1 and 400. Okay, that's where it went. Now it goes up, now it goes down, now it goes to the right, now it goes down, now it goes up. So those properties are always randomized. Well, once the, that tween ends, I want it to happen continuously for my perpetual motion. So what I'm going to do is add an oncomplete parameter. This is a built-in parameter of a tween max instance. It's optional, but it allows me to define a function that will run as soon as the tweet tween has finished. And so I'm going to say, let's just run our test function real quick. Okay? And you'll see that the tween is done. It will show up as soon as my tween finishes. So I'll test one more time. The tween is done. All right? This thing is tweening really far away. We'll do it one more time. The tween is done. So I can detect when a tween finishes. And we can use this for sequencing in a pinch if we want. But right now, I'm just going to say, Let's call the run tween function again. All right, I don't need test anymore, it's a little clutter. So run tween creates a tween. And when that tween is done, 
on complete, we call that same function again. It's almost like a loop. Well, it is a loop. And you'll see that this thing just moves around and around and around, totally random. All right, I could watch this all day. We're going to add some easing. We can make it a little bit, you know, bouncier, do whatever we want. But it's totally random, perpetual motion. All right. Now we're just going to make it a little bit prettier. Let me uh, get rid of my horrible output there. And in the actions frame, let's also change the tint. So we've done this tint trick before. We have a video on random color changes. And we're going to tell the tint property to just set itself to whatever get new color returns. Again, we have a tutorial on this somewhere on the site. Uh, I'll link it up in the bottom. So now, while it's moving, it's also changing color. Aha! Uh -huh. Not so shabby. Pretty cool. Um, and again, really one line of code makes this all happen. Yeah, there's some external stuff here that's necessary, but this is the focus. I'm also going to tell the background to change color. So let's just paste in that. Uh, background MC over the course of one second will change its tint as well. So now everything is completely random. It's beautiful. It's running really smooth, and I never know what colors it's going to think of next. Now to make this really interesting, we're going to scale it as well. Well, whenever we're scaling something in ActionScript, the X scale and Y scale are independent properties of a symbol. So I want them all to tween to the same value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a variable to store or to re reference a random number that will be used for the X scale and the Y scale, or I should say scale X and scale Y, action script three, buddy. Um, so here, the variable that I'm calling scale R is going to be whatever the random range function returns when I pass in a value between 0.1 and 30, meaning that this number will be somewhere between a tenth of the movie clip's normal size or 30 times its normal size. So, just so you can see this, I'm going to say that the scale x is going to be set to scale r, that r stands for random in my world, and the scale y will be set to the same value, whatever scale r is. And every time this function runs, we're going to get a new value for that random number, or that random scale. Aha! It's like night and day. This thing grows, it shrinks, it moves, it changes color. It's really slick. And you can take this so far, you could randomly change any number of properties. You can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can add easing. Um, I can have the background change at a different rate if I wanted to. Um, I could have it change really quick. So just sort of flashes, you don't see it um, change. Um, I kind of like it being set the same, all right? And we can also say that, you know, maybe both values, I'm sorry, will be really, will be really slow. Four seconds in four seconds. All right, see a lot of different changes going on there. So this is just a really short example of what can be done with a randomizing the properties in your tweens and also using the on complete callback functions. So now I have random perpetual motion. Um, I'll give you this file to download um, on the blog. So visit snorkel.tv and just do a search for random perpetual motion and uh, it'll come up. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.